God, we are praising you right now because that's how powerful your presence is. We have just given you praise out of the story where three men were willing to take a stand and it meant they went into a fiery furnace, but you were there with them. The book of James tells us that we will count it all joy when we go through trouble and trials. Lord, to even wrap our mind around that means we must be dependent on your presence. That's how we count it all joy, because you're with us, you're going to bring us through, you're going to make us better, and we give you praise today, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, give him the best praise. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. So good to see you. It's great to be in church. House lights are gonna come up some, and as they do, give people a greeting with a great smile, wave at them, make one another feel welcome today. Let's uh, show our appreciation to the worship team today. Such a powerful experience of the presence of God. Again, welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. I wanna invite you to take your Bibles and turn to the New Testament, the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter one. You can access the word on your device or the scripture that I'm about to read will be available to you on the screens. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to begin at verse 26, okay? And it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Let's pause right there and let me say, Merry Christmas. (laughs) It's often a a chapter and a passage that we go to at Christmas time. But I know God has inspired a word to my heart for this time. But let me put it in context. We find Elizabeth in her sixth month of pregnancy. Now she was in her 60s. Gabriel, an angel, appeared to her husband while her husband Zechariah was serving in the temple. The angel declared that they were going to have a son. They would name him John. Look at verse 18. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, but he's a smart man. Because he goes on to say, and my wife is well along in years. (laughs) Very important. This won't be on the screen, but just so you get the context. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. So when we find Elizabeth six months into her pregnancy, and now the angel Gabriel is appearing to Mary, you're seeing God doing an amazing work on the inside of a lady who's in her 60s. He's about to do an amazing work on the inside of a young lady who's 16. Today, I want to talk to the generations. The generations. Verse 28 says, the angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, 
the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now watch the angel say, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me, may your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. At the time Mary, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. I build this message on the premise of what I deeply believe that inside each person in this room, God is doing something significant. It is a God thing. You might be in a service where someone feels a leading that there is a call of God being issued to perhaps a young person or, you know, there's just that, that unique manifestation of the work of God. I totally agree with that. But what I'm saying today is everyone from the front row to the back, from one side to the other, every single one of us in this room are people in whom God is doing something very important. According to Luke 1, what was happening in Elizabeth was conceived by God. What was happening in Mary was conceived by God. What's happening in you is a God thing. What's going on on the inside is something that the Lord is doing. So a way to look at this is to see how God is saying, Elizabeth, I know you're in your 60s, but I'm not finished with you. It's God saying, Mary, I know you're just a teenager, but I have something important for you to do. This is making sure that Elizabeth doesn't take the attitude as a senior adult to say, hey, Mary, I'll cheer you on, but I'm done. I have put in the work. I've fulfilled my call. Now, I believe in what God's doing in you, and I'm going to support it, but I'm done. This is going to keep Mary, a teenager, from saying, I'm just a teenager. I'm more interested in what life has for me. I'm not real interested in responsibility that comes along with purpose. No, this is Mary saying, I'm going to say, what does life need from me? Mary is teaching us something and I pray that every person in the room gets this. If you live to see what life can give you, you will never be satisfied. But if you say, why did God create me and what am I to bring to life? What is life requiring of me? What is this season, this hour calling out of you, of us? Because we're here to be a solution. We're here to be an answer. And what he's showing us is that this generation and this generation both have something on the inside. It's a God thing. It's going to connect and advance the kingdom of God. It's the generations. God has always worked that way. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob. It wasn't when Abraham finally stepped off the scene that God could use Isaac. No, he was using the generations simultaneously. What God is doing, it is his work and he is doing it for right now. Everyone in this room, God's doing something on the inside and it matters. Can you say amen? God, according to Luke 1, he named what he was doing in the life of Elizabeth and in the life of Mary. Elizabeth, you will name him John. Mary, you will name him Jesus. John means Shalom or Jehovah has been gracious. In the life of Mary is the deliverer, the one who would bring salvation. Both is a work of grace of God on the inside. What God's doing inside of you is a, is a work of his grace that's going to give you a grace for someone else. God gets to name it. See, this is why I bring the attitude, Lord, what do you want from me? You're doing the work in me. You put the name on it. And that will give me a sense of direction. He names it, finally. He then connects it. When Mary went to Elizabeth's house and said, hey, Elizabeth, before the two of them could talk, what God was doing in Elizabeth had a reaction to what God was doing in Mary. That's amazing. Now I want you to get this. The dream inside of both of them identified. It says that John in Elizabeth's womb, he started leaping when Mary came through the door. Let me put it into context. I am 54. I need to find somebody who is, if you're a teenager, raise your hand. Okay, here's what I believe. I believe that God, according to Acts chapter two, is going to give young men visions. He's given people like me, old men, dreams. The old men will dream, the young men will see visions. Dreams and visions are about the future. The Holy Spirit is at work in birthing the church in Acts 2. Every generation is included. And what God is doing is significant. I believe that the dream in me is to inspire and encourage the vision in you. And I believe the vision in you should fire up the dream in me. I believe, according to Luke 1, the dream in me connects with the vision in you. And if they don't, God is not going to be able to do all that he wants to do. It took Elizabeth to give birth to a way maker. John would prepare the way so that everybody was ready. When Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is the way? And when you see Elizabeth giving birth to John and Mary giving birth to Jesus, prophecies from the Old Testament are landing in the real world. I believe that the vision God is putting in your heart is prophetic. I believe it's been in motion for years. I believe that the dream in me has been in motion for years. And the dream inside of me starts to jump because of the vision inside of you. And when a visionary, a young person can come to an older person who's still dreaming, there's an ignition. And when an older person can come to a young person who's like, I want responsibility for purpose right now. Something happens. It's called the kingdom of God happening in the earth. Come on, let's get into this today. This is for everybody, all of us, every one of us. And you know, the enemy would love nothing more than for the generations to not connect 
communicate, or collaborate. I have so much to learn from the next generation. And the next generation has so much to learn from my generation. I will never try to get the next generation to embrace my preferences or my tastes in things. They can have their sights and their sounds. I will do everything to have them anchored in the gospel. Now, how they express their sounds and expressions, that's awesome because every generation has had their sound and had their expression. And thank God we have moved on from being hung up on style. If you, well, let me just keep preaching. I'm gonna, if I get off on that, I keep you until Christmas. So the, the point here is people in the generations who are still walking in the life vitality of dreams and vision. What the enemy wants is to visit upon our young people with pain at an early age so that they are jaded and they don't trust the older generation. And they walk in a hesitancy and they struggle with really having a vision. The enemy wants people my age to say, I've lived long enough to see so much inequity in life that I've lost my confidence in people. I've lost my confidence in God. So we're both jaded. I'm no longer dreaming and the young person has no vision and the world goes to hell. But if we can have a revival where the Holy Spirit works, and if it's an Acts chapter two revival, no one gets left out. And I feel this, everybody's included. And our young people are gonna be full of vision. And this community and world needs the next generation full of a vision from God. And those of us older, well along in years, will be dreaming. My conviction is this, that I should have a greater dream than I've ever had. I have lived long enough to see the faithfulness of God. I've lived long enough to know that in the lowest valley, he'll be a shepherd who will walk with you until you come out of that valley. I've lived long enough to know when you're in the furnace of adversity, there is one who will be in the fire with you. I've lived long enough to know when you face the giant, there is a God of the battle who will bring the giant down. So when a teenager walks up to me and says, I have a vision, I am going to inspire them because I'm, I'm dreaming bigger than I've ever dreamed in my life because I have more testimony of what God can do. Both generations or all generations should be saying, God, how will this ever happen? Elizabeth's like, what? Mary's like, wait, what? Elizabeth just says, what? Mary says, wait, what? Because unless God does it, it's not gonna get done. Oh, for a church full of the generations that say, I have a dream in my heart. I know it's of God. I have no idea how God's gonna do it, but I know he's going to do it. A teenager, a child saying, I have a vision. I don't know, but I know God is gonna do it. I know his word never fails. I know he's gonna, and then see the point here, that what was happening in Elizabeth was very essential to what's going on in Mary. What's happening in me 
is essential for what God wants to do in the next generation and vice versa. He connects it. Let me say then that if I have a God-sized dream and you have a vision, that I'm not just nourishing my soul spiritually for me. I'm eating for two now. I'm going to have to increase my prayer time, increase my Bible time, increase my worship time because I'm nurturing a dream. And dreams don't happen overnight. I'm going to have to nurture this dream for those times where I wonder if it will come true. I'm going to have to nurture vision while I'm waiting for it to happen. I'm going to have to keep feeding my faith the word of God so that I can continue to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to have to keep putting all of this spiritual nourishment in my heart because I'm going to have to speak things that aren't as though they are until they are. Dreams and vision, they're part of the language of the Spirit. God said to Habakkuk, after Habakkuk goes on a few chapters of saying, God, I don't understand why you're allowing all of this. It was as tough and difficult a time. And here's what God said. He says, I want you to look to see what I will say. You hear the wording. I want you, Habakkuk, to look so that you can see what I will say. He's going to give him a vision. I, don't, I didn't do this in previous services. I feel I should do it here. It's not enough for me to say have a vision or have a dream. How does that happen? We're going to have to look and see what he will say. So if I will go to the word, what he says, I then can see with the eyes of my heart because they will be enlightened and I'll walk in the dream and I will walk in the vision. Habakkuk, you're going to have to get yourself in a unique place. Sometimes you got to try to find a way to get above the noise so that you can hear, so that you can see what he is saying. It is so noisy right now. Be bigger than the noise. How can I be bigger than the noise? Get above it. How do I get above it? Go to the word. Withdraw yourself to the word of God and you will see what he's saying and you will come out with a vision. The eyes of your heart will be enlightened and watch this, the inspiration that comes with the dream and the inspiration that comes with vision, the inspiration will lead to participation, meaning you'll find next steps. You'll find a way to be the solution. You will find a way to not just contribute to the noise. You will contribute as a solution to the problem because that's what the church does. Would you help me in making this point final and fixed in our heart? Here's what I would like to do. I would like to ask anyone in this room born 1945 or earlier, would you please stand? Anyone here, 19, and remain standing, remain standing. I want to get an eruption of gratitude and honor for these people. Remain standing. Okay. Now, would you stand if you were born from 1946 to 1964? Would you stand, please? Put your hands together for all the baby boomers. Remain standing. Now, if you were born 1965 to 1980, would you please stand? This is Generation X. 
<laughs> if you were born 1981 to 1996, would you stand? The millennials. <laughs> if you were born from 1997 to 2012, would you stand? There we go. Generation Z. Anyone in the room born 2013 to now? Make some noise. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. So in this room, we have six generations. That's amazing. And Luke chapter one has just taught us that what God is doing right now in those who were the first group to stand, those who are well along in years, is just as significant as what he's doing in any other generation. We live in a culture, and one of the dangers of it is that it gives this idea of aging out. No longer of value no longer with something to contribute. That's not the Bible. Each generation is significant. And if, if we let culture have its way, the young generation will be irresponsible and say, you do it. And the older generation say, you aged me out. You've treated me as though I have nothing to contribute. So there's no vision and there's no dream. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. That says there is so much value in this room. And the reason is because God's doing something on the inside of everyone in this room. And what he's doing in you is significant to every baby being cared for in our nursery right now. Amen. Amen. You get it, don't you? You see it? Elizabeth and Mary. Baby Boomer and Generation Z represented, if it was modern day, right here in Luke chapter 1. Can I say to somebody here today, dream again. Dream again. Anything that has stopped you from dreaming, let God help you and heal you. Dream again, keep growing, keep learning, keep opening your heart. This next generation needs you. Worship team, can you help me today? As they come, I'm just reminded in my heart, there was an app that came out called Periscope and it allowed you to broadcast live. Now Facebook has the feature where you can go live and. We're broadcasting live on Facebook right now and YouTube. There are all of these platforms where you can do this. But there was a time where Periscope was one of the first apps that allowed you to broadcast live. And I would go to events and I would watch people periscoping the event so that somebody who was not there, someone who was in another state, someone who was in another country could be a part of what was happening because someone was giving eyes to it. I think that my age group, if our hearts are still tender and childlike and full of the Holy Spirit, I think we could be the periscope that has a perspective that comes with the journey, that has a perspective. Think about the voice of faith we could be for the next generation. You will fulfill the plan of God. You will be everything that God wants you to be. You will overcome the challenges. There is no devil too strong for the God who is in you. But here's the key. The way they feel the power of that is if they know they're talking to a dreamer, not someone who has said, I'm done. Let's refuse to allow a disrespect from the young generation to the older generation. And let's refuse to allow a distrust from the older generation to the young generation. 
And here's how we will bridge the grace. There was a grace in Elizabeth for the grace in Mary. There's a grace in us for the next generation and in them for us. We, we march to a whole different rhythm because we're the people of God. We're the people of faith. Building one another up. Encouraging one another. Praying for one another. Here's what one version says. Spurring one another on to good works. Would you just close your eyes in the power of his presence? Holy Spirit, do a mighty work in everyone in this place. A mighty work. Help us, God. Inspire hearts with dreams and vision. May the inspiration lead to a way to participate in this real world with real solutions. I want to ask the worship team to help us in this moment. They're going to sing the song Available. And if you'll make yourself truly available to the Lord, then he'll do the work. Make it your prayer as they lead us today.
Jesus. The Lord's here. Would you just lift your hands in his presence? Just seek him today. Have your way, God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Jesus. inspiration and the wisdom of how we participate in the dream and the vision. Thank you for a church of generations. Thank you for a church where the generations can seek you and advance the kingdom of God together. God, as we open up new space, that will be used to minister to children on Sundays and Wednesdays, to teenagers Monday through Friday. I wanna give you praise that it was the generations that made it possible. The generations that still dreaming, working and giving so that this next generation can have the word and worship, connection, community, so powerfully given in the context of this local church. Thank you, God, for young people that are taking responsibility for the purpose that you've put in their heart, honoring it and being a good steward of their life. God, we praise you for the church, a spirit-inspired, spirit-filled church full of dreams and visions. And everybody said, let's praise him for what he's done today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give us just a couple more minutes. You can be seated. And would you welcome Pastor Devin 
as he comes to the platform. Thank you, Pastor Ron. What a great message all weekend, man. You just nailed it. It's been great. You know, seriously, this weekend has just been just a, all three services have been amazing. It's wonderful to be able to hear the, the message come forth in inspiration and motivation. And aren't you glad to know that God's not finished with any of us yet? Amen. And the church is still vibrant. The church is still strong. And we're going to make it. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for being with us here today and joining us in this service. And for those of you who have joined us online, thank you for being with us as well. And we just want to be sure that you're aware that we love you and we appreciate you. And I know in this unusual season of what we're going through as it relates to the whole COVID issue, I appreciate your tenacity and I appreciate your patience with everything that's going on as the church continues to navigate this. And, and thank you at whatever level you're able to participate. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to know more about the assembly, we want to encourage you to go to the assembly.org forward slash contact and complete the information there and that'll help us be able to have an opportunity to get back to you and give you more information about the church and the ministries that we have available and then also maybe you've been attending here for a while and uh, or you've been attending online and you really want to get connected you want to really know how to get involved and participate in the ministries here at the assembly and so immediately following this service today we begin the growth track series and pastor zach swally will be teaching that and we just want to encourage you to make yourselves available for those classes so that you can know more about the assembly and specifically how you can be involved in the ministries and the opportunities to serve at this church we also want to continue to thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness as you continue to support the church in the ministry here in finances and I know that uh, many of us, thankfully, we have continued to have employment. God has continued to be our provider and have given us great provision. I know just a few weeks ago, we took a special offering uh, for the church to be able to support another uh, ministry over in the uh, Colorado City area. And your generosity was just amazing. And so thank you, church, for just being the church and being supportive in that way. We want to remind you that you can continue to give online or you can give text. Or today, as you leave this service, uh, there's some offering receptacles back there at the back. We just encourage you to drop your offering in and continue to be faithful to God in this way. If you would stand with me this morning, and let's just give the Lord another hand clap of praise and thank Him for His goodness. And once again, thank you for being here. And please stay safe and continue to, to live life to its fullest. And God bless you. You are dismissed.